Not much is known about Roberta Elder's early life. No records on her background have surfaced. It is impossible to give an illustration of Roberta Elder's background and what may have led her to commit the devious, nefarious acts she is accused of carrying out on her family members and others for this reason. When she was arrested in 1952, she was 43 years of age. So she was born in 1909 or 1908. Her place of origin is unknown. She is thought to be from Watkinsville, Georgia. At some point, she moved to Atlanta, Georgia, where she went on her murdering spree in the confines of her own home. Roberta Elder was dubbed Atlanta's Mrs. Bluebeard in reference to a children's fairy tale in which a wealthy man with a blue beard kills multiple wives and leaves their bodies to rot in a special room in his home. Roberta came under suspicion by the police only after her husband, Reverend William M. Elder, died. The Reverend fell ill at his construction job. He started vomiting and sweating. He had an upset stomach. When asked what was wrong, he told his foreman that he had eaten bananas and cheese, bought away from home and eaten at work. The Reverend had already lost two daughters a year prior, both to pneumonia. As Reverend Elder lay on his deathbed, his body wasted away. His fellow workman, Henry Smith, commented, Well, I didn't know bananas and cheese would hurt you. I didn't know it myself, the Reverend replied, all the while never knowing what was sapping his lifeblood away. Later on, the family physician would testify in court that Roberta called him to the home when the minister first became ill. The Reverend was given medicine and Roberta was told to call the doctor if the Reverend failed to show improvement and cure. He was not called again until the Reverend was dying. The Reverend died August 21st, 1952. Roberta told the doctor he had a setback after he ate some eggs and cheese cooked at home. The physician noticed the Reverend's skin had slipped and there were peculiar skin discolorations and sores on his body. The physician refused to sign the death certificate and called in the county coroner, the circumstances proving to be death suspicious. The coroner was concerned about the multiple elder family member deaths, so he decided to test whether the Reverend could have died from arsenic poisoning, the symptoms of which are much like pneumonia. Just as he suspected, arsenic was found in the Reverend's body. He decided it was time to alert the authorities of the multiple deaths coming out of the elder's home on Easton Street. The police immediately began to look at Roberta as their suspect. The bodies of her stepdaughters were exhumed and the coroner and a licensed criminologist reported 1.20 milligrams of pure arsenic were found in the hair and skin tissues. Their death certificates show pneumonia listed as their cause of death. The Reverend surviving children observed that Roberta had given Reverend Elder milk of magnesia she had also given it to their sisters, supposedly to help ease their symptoms. Two of the Reverend's surviving daughters, Dorothy and Viola, spoke to the coroner's jury. Dorothy said she was ill once after Roberta gave her some milk of magnesia. She said she had suffered two illnesses with symptoms similar to those occurred by the deceased relatives. Roberta had given her milk of magnesia two or three times, and it made her worse. Viola said she vomited and was ill after Roberta gave her some medicine also. The murder started back as early as 1938. Roberta's common-law husband, John Woodward, age 36, died under suspicious circumstances. His death was considered to be from an undetermined cause. Nearly a year later, James W. Thurman, 
Roberta's 12-year-old son, who was called Willie from her first marriage, died in June of 1939. Willie died from malnutrition and respiratory trouble recorded on the death certificates. Two newborn babies Roberta birthed from her first marriage died in undetermined years. A two-week-old daughter named Willie Mae Thurman died in Watkinsville, Georgia, and a one-week-old daughter named Lily Lou Thurman died in Atlanta. Jimmy Lee Crane Hunter, Roberta's two-year-old grandson, died December 16, 1941. Gloria Evans, Roberta's cousin, died from acute gastroenteritis, December 26, 1944. Collie Brown, Roberta's mother, died in 1945. James Garfield Crane, who was 45 at the time of his death, died from food poisoning as well in 1947. Mrs. Willie May Elder, age 41, who was a former wife of Mr. Elder, died from influenza in 1950. One by one, Roberta's relatives were dying at a rapid pace. Perhaps Roberta felt emboldened since she hadn't been caught up to by that point. She upped the stakes and started murdering her victims more often. She went from murdering one victim a year or so to murdering multiple people in the same year. Two stepdaughters, 15-year-old Fannie Mae Elder and 9-year-old Annie Pearl Elder succumbed to pneumonia in 1951. Annie died on January 11. A 94-year-old friend who lived with her named Nora Scott Harris died on December 22, 1951. So the deaths were really starting to pile up by then. Roberta was arrested September 26, 1952 for the death of her husband, the Reverend. She was held in jail by Atlanta police for nine months before her case was presented to the grand jury and over 15 months before the case finally went to trial. Roberta never admitted to poisoning any of the 13 victims who died while living under her household roof. She told Atlanta officials that she had two husbands and friends. John Woodward, the first victim, died in the Grady Hospital, according to her. She testified that she had a $125 insurance policy on him when he expired, which she collected. The police said she only had one legal husband. She alleged her husbands were Reverend Elder and a man named Garfield Crane. Insurance money was her motive for the murders. The amounts ranged mostly from $50 to $225. She took out a larger policy for the Reverend, $500. She took the policy out on him the year before he died. The insurance company refused to pay because of the nature of the death. The police took depositions from officials of an Atlanta fraternal organization, some of which testified in court that Roberta had misplaced a fairly large sum of money as treasurer. The group first noticed discrepancies in the bank account when a check bounced. There was no satisfaction of this item by Roberta at first, even though newly elected leaders insisted that she meet them at the bank with the bank book. She always forgot the bank book, they said. Police reported the policy she took out on her 15-year-old stepdaughter, Fannie Mae, totaled $550. She was asked three times if she had ever bought any kind of poison, including arsenic. She denied this and claimed she wouldn't know what it looks like. The police were never able to find a record that Roberta had actually purchased arsenic. But the Reverend's surviving children believe she got it from her brother's farm. Police could not produce a witness who saw her place arsenic in a milk of magnesia bottle. One witness whose only name found on record was Andrew said that he and his wife had driven Roberta to Watkin Watkinsville on Father's Day. But she did not bring back anything in a sack to his knowledge. Residents of the elder home were called to testify under oath if they had administered any arsenic to any of the three poisoned people. They gave negative answers. 
The state said they couldn't electrocute her under the circumstantial evidence code, but she would never get out of prison for her revolting crimes. She was officially charged with the murders of Reverend Elder, Annie, and Fanny Elder, but she was only tried in connection with the death of her husband. The state showed evidence that the three victims died of arsenic poisoning and that Robert Roberta was a beneficiary of their insurance policies in an, un, in an amount slightly more than funeral expenses. Investigators found medicine bottles containing arsenic in the elder home. Dorothy Elder testified that she had seen something pink in a brown paper sack in the elder home prior to her father's death. She told the court it was located in the bottom of a cabinet where medicines had been kept and said that her stepmother had said that it was to be used to kill bugs. Investigators also found an arsenic mixture used chiefly in agriculture at Roberta's sister's home in Watkinsville, Georgia. The judge, Judge Shaw, refused to allow much of the evidence to be admitted into the case. The Reverend's 20-year-old son, Willie Elder Jr., told the court that Roberta had administered medicine to each of the three people who died and added that he stopped eating at the house after his father's death. When asked why, he replied that if she poisoned them, she might try to get him too. He testified that he had gotten sick twice at the breakfast table after eating. All of the testimony and evidence against Roberta was enough to find her guilty. Roberta was convicted to a life sentence based on circumstantial evidence and remanded to, jail, to prison. Throughout the investigation and trial, Roberta maintained her innocence. If they hadn't caught her when they did, who knows how many more family members' lives she would have taken. May their souls rest in peace. All of this is alleged. Thanks for watching.